Welcome everyone to another segment of Moments with the Master. My name is Brother Renthian Pigney, and today I want to talk to you about why we as Christians shouldn't live in fear. Why we as Christians should not live in fear. And the text I want to use to highlight this point is found in Psalms chapter 27, verses 1 through 5. Psalms chapter 27, verses 1 through 5. And if you have your Bibles, I ask that you read along with me. And it reads as follows. Uh, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon his beauty and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. In this text, David is trying to help us understand that there's no need for us as Christians to live in fear because God is our light and our salvation. Somebody may say, what does that mean? Well, it's a few things that we can learn from this text. And that is, God is our ultimate protector. God is our ultimate protector. Through the Bible, the Bible teaches us this. In uh, Isaiah 54 and 17, God told Isaiah that no weapon formed against you shall, shall prosper. And again, in uh, Romans uh, 5 and uh, 8 and 31, Paul says that if God is for us, who can be against us? And all this is leading up, all this is helping us to understand that God is our ultimate protector. Again, God is our ultimate protector. And somebody said, okay, when you say God is our ultimate protector, what does that equate to? That, equate to? that equates to us not having to rely on weapons or the authorities to protect us. Now, it's good to know that we have the authorities there, their protection there. But they can't protect us from certain things. They, can't, they cannot protect us from a heartache or from a heartbreak. They can't protect us from people psychologically and emotionally taking advantage of us, taking advantage of us or hurting us. They can't protect us from people lying on us. They can't protect us from people taking our love for granted. It's certain things that weapons and authorities cannot protect us from that God can because he is our ultimate protector. And David also reminds us in Psalms 46 and 1, he says that God is our refuge and our strength. He is a very present help in times of trouble. Again, helping us to realize that when you find yourself in difficult times, it's God who you run to for security. It's God who you run to for protection. Another thing we can learn from this text is that God is in control. That God is in control. Not only is he in control of what happens around us, he's in control of what happens within our lives. In fact, he told uh, Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said that I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans for each and every one of our lives. Plans to, to prosper us, not to harm us. Plans to, to, to give us hope and a future, just like he told Jeremiah. He has plans for us, but there are things that he expects from us. If you look at the uh, text, uh, David talks about this. In verses four through five, David talks about how he wants to seek God's presence, how he wants to dwell in God's spiritual house. And then later on in verse 14, he talks about how we need to wait on God. So there are a few things if we expect God's protection that we need to do on our behalf. We need to, number one, seek God and be desiring to dwell in his house, to dwell in his presence. 
The second thing we need to do, we need to wait on God. Now, when I say wait on God, I'm not mean, I don't mean sit on your thumbs. I don't mean not do what you can to help your situation. But what I do mean is not to do anything that's going to make your situation worse. Sometimes we, when in our uh, attempts to try to want to move things along or to progress our situation, we end up doing things that make the situation work, that, that causes the predicament to escalate and to become even uh, uh, more harmful to our lives than what it would have been if we would have just waited on God. So I just want to encourage you uh, today to not live in fear. And the reason why you shouldn't live in fear is because you have God as your ultimate protector. In fact, David talks about how if somebody tries to advance against you, your enemies, he talks about this in verse 2, that they will stumble and fall. And then in verse uh, 6, he talks about how God will exalt him above his enemies. And this is how awesome God is, is that if somebody tries to advance against you or tries to set a trap against you, God will cause them to fall in that trap. And then he'll turn around and exalt you above them, whether it be a, a boss or uh, someone who you're dealing with on your job or whoever it may be. God will not only protect you from anything that they may be trying to do to you, but he will exalt you in their eyes because God is your ultimate protector. So keep this in mind that. As Christians, don't allow this world or the devil to cause you to live in fear. But instead, remember that God is your ultimate protector and that he's in control of everything that happens around you and within your life. Thanks again for joining us for another segment of Moments with the Master. Until next time, may God keep you and bless you.